Good morning, church. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Truly, we are blessed to once again be found in the house of prayer. God has blessed us to see another week. as well as our virtual audiences. Pray God's richest blessings upon you. So what? Why are we here again? Okay, just, 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 just checking. Just making sure I'm in the right place. As always, we acknowledge that we do not own the right to any of the music that we will be sharing in this morning's worship. But we thank God for those who have shared their gifts with the kingdom so that we might worship with them in spirit and in truth. Amen. 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 Good morning. Our scripture reading this 
one will come from James, the second chapter, and we're going to begin at the 14th verse. What does it profit, my brethren? For a man says he has faith, they have not what it, and faith saves him. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warm and filled, not with understanding. He give them not those things which are needful to the body. What does it profit? Yes. yes. Even so faith, if it has not what is dead, yes. and alone. Yes, man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have work. Show me thy faith without work, and I will show thee my faith by, by work. Yes. I believe that there is one God that does well. The devil also believes he trembles. <laughs> but what thou knowest, O man, man, thy faith without work is dead. Mm. I read in James, the second chapter, the 14th. Through the 20 verse, may the Lord have a blessing to the reader, the hearers, the doers of his word. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Blessing once again to be in the house of the Lord. of your son Jesus Christ we yes. see your love justice, mercy providency and your victory father we thank you for that father we thank you for always keeping your promises father we thank you father for, for relieving those that are heavy laden father father we ask that you will bless our pastor our first lady all the members of this gathering, Father, for those who are joining us online, Father. Father, we pray for our children, Father, as they continue on this year's school classes, Father, that you would protect them and keep them from all danger, Father, that you would bless our sick and shed-ins, Father, that you would bet, bet, that you would bless our government officials, Father, that you will continue to watch over and keep them, Father. These is all blessings, Father, we ask in your glorious Son, Jesus Christ, name. Amen. 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 Amen.
We're going right to the Word. <laughs> Luke chapter 5, verses 4 through 11. Luke chapter 5, verses 4 through 11. In the King James Version of God's Word, we find these words recorded. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draw. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word will I let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes. And their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished and all that were with him at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. Mm. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. You may be seated as I will be sharing with you from our theme of our Educational Missionary Baptist Association, which is launching out into deeper water. Amen. Launching out into deeper water. As I was attending the annual session of the Educational Missionary Baptist Association on last week, when I saw this theme, it just spoke to my spirit as something that we need to be reminded of today. Sometimes we get comfortable on the shore. Sometimes we get comfortable in the shallow water. But I'm here to let us know today, not just you, but me also, to let us know today that it is well past time for us to launch out into deeper water. It's time for us to stop staying in our comfort zone. It's time for us to stop waiting for somebody else to move. It's time for us to move out. into deeper water. Amen. So as we look at this subject of launching out into deeper water, Luke chapter 5 opens with Jesus being asked to teach the word by the lake of Gennesaret, which is also known as the Sea of Galilee. As Jesus was assessing the situation, he saw two ships. One of those ships was belonging to Simon Peter and his brother Andrew, and the other ship belonging to the sons of Zebedee, James and John. But because the crowd was so large, Jesus needed to get off of the shore, off of the land, and get out so that he would be able to teach the multitude of people that had gathered to hear the word. All right. Oh, what a wonderful problem it is to have that you have so many people who are hungry for the word. So many people who are hungry and thirsting after righteousness that you have to step far enough back so that you might be able to minister to the whole crowd. Imagine having an overflow area. Uh, mm, the crowd didn't just gather for gossip. They gathered to hear the word of God. So Jesus went into Simon's ship and asked him to go out a short distance from the shore. In other words, let's go into the shallow water. Yeah. 
We don't see anywhere in the text where Peter put up an argument. Now, anybody who knows anything about Peter, you know that Peter was not one to bite his tongue. Peter was not one who was afraid to give somebody a piece of his mind. Do we have anybody in here today who can identify with Peter? Uh, every, every now and then, instead of speaking in tongues by the Holy Spirit, there's another language that comes out. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I'm talking to people who are in the church house. We don't have anybody here with an issue. Now, there are some people who sometimes those words flow off. Uh, but Peter, bold Peter, Peter, cousin Peter, Peter, big mouth Peter, allow Jesus to take control of his boat. And, and just for those, I, I, now I, I kept hearing Brother Glover say hot temper. Simon, the name Simon actually means hot temper. Yeah. So Peter had a tendency to live up. Come on. Oh, we, we said a few weeks ago, what's in a name? There was something in the. But in this case, we don't see Peter giving Jesus any lip. We see Peter obeying what Jesus asked him to do. Let him take control. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of what Paul said in Romans 12, chapter 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body the living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, your reasonable act of worship. It's just the right thing to do. It makes sense for Peter in this case to say, it doesn't matter what was going on with my boat. I'm not going to say that it's my boat. I'm not going to say, Jesus, you need to go find another boat. But Jesus, you want to be, be up on my boat? Well, come on. Welcome aboard. How many of us today need to welcome Jesus into our ship? How many of us today need to welcome Jesus into our life? Uh, do you mind if I press it even a little further? That ship represented Simon's livelihood. We can't just invite Jesus into our ship on Sunday morning. But for those of us who work Monday through Friday, we sure not need to have Jesus on the ship Monday through Friday. Because sometimes you're going to catch more there on Monday through Friday. So don't just wait till Sunday morning to say, welcome aboard, Jesus. How about Friday night when you're getting ready to go to the... We need to welcome Jesus aboard our ship in obedience because that is our reasonable, rational act of worship. So when Jesus finished teaching, he told Simon to launch out into the deep. And let down his net for a catch of fish. And I want you to see something here. Jesus did not send the fish to Simon. Jesus sent Simon All right. to the fish. When we're looking at launching out into deeper water, we can't just hit it, sit here Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, and expect people to come to us. The fish didn't just jump up on the boat, even though Jesus could have made that happen. 
But Jesus said, Simon, I need you to go where the fish are. But Simon said, Master, we have toiled all night, and we haven't caught anything. Simon did as Jesus commanded. He was once again obedient to Jesus. Now understand something. These were not recreational fishermen. They were not fishing for sport. But they were professionals who fished to make a living. In other words, when it came to fishing for fish, they knew what they were doing. They had already toiled all night long. Yeah. Yeah. But they didn't catch anything. But yet when Jesus said, launch out into the deep and let down your nets. Peter said, we toiled all night long. But nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Notice that Peter did not say, what does this carpenter know about fishing? Notice he did not say, what does this teacher know about fishing? Notice that he did not say, why should we listen to him? I know that I don't know everything. And I know that I have people in this congregation who know things that I don't know. But if and when the Holy Ghost speaks to me, If you believe God has put me here, when the Holy Ghost speaks to me to speak to you, just because it's not IT related, just because it's not computer related, I don't need you to look at me like I don't know what I'm talking about, because if God gives it to me to give to you, Now, now he, hear me well. I said, if God gives it to me to give it to you, I'm not talking about my vision. I'm talking about God's vision. Now, that's a problem that some preachers and pastors have. They think just because they are in the position that all they have to do is tell you because I said so. But if it didn't come from God, Okay, well, since I stepped off on this landmine, let me keep going. Because the writer of Hebrews said, Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourself, for they keep watch for your soul as one that must give an account. So don't take it upon yourself to try to correct the pastor, because God can correct the pastor. But you need to have enough discernment in your spirit to know when something is coming from God and when something is not. I 
it didn't take long for me to get off the pretty page here today, did it? Just because Jesus said it, Peter said, I'll do it. And when he took Jesus at his word, look at what happened. They caught such a large number of fish that their net started breaking. Uh, well, let me go ahead and get some more trouble. When the net started breaking, Simon didn't try to catch all the fish by himself, but he beckoned to James and John and ask them to come help. There's so many fish out there that there's not enough room for all the fish in good hope. So rather than trying to get all the fish into good hope, then we need to go check out Bright Morning Star. We need to go check out Zion Hill. We need to go check out Sunlight. We need to go check out First Baptist of Pineville. We need to go check out Pineville Park because there's such a great abundance of fish that we cannot carry them all. So we need to work together. There is no reason mm, all right. for us to be out here fighting over fish. <laughs> because there are enough fish out there all right. yes, Lord. for all of them. Yes, yes. I'm one who has been guilty of saying when you look around certain areas, you see a church on every corner. Have the audacity to say we don't need all those churches. But when you look at the percentage of people who are in church on Sunday morning versus the number of people who are not in church on Sunday morning, if everybody came to church, then all those churches We need to get out of this territorial mentality and launch out into deeper water with the understanding that there's enough work for all of us to do. Did not Jesus say the harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few? Launching out into deeper water. Yes, yes, yes. After the miraculous catch of fish, All right. Peter was humble in the presence of Jesus. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Being in the presence of Jesus All right. come on. Come on. should cause us to see ourselves right. as we really are. Without him. We spend too much time looking at other folk in the church. And comparing ourselves to other folk in the church. So we can feel good about ourselves in the church. But if we ever have an encounter with Jesus Christ, if the Holy Ghost ever pricks us on the inside, then we realize that we do not have the right to look down our holy sanctified noses at anybody else because they're put by the grace of God. Have you ever looked at yourself and been astonished at the fact that the Lord was able to use you? I know it's not by my might. It's not by my power. 
that I stand here today. I realize that had it not been for the grace of God, because I know me. I know that God still has some stuff that he's working on. But yet, in spite of the fact that I'm not perfect, in spite of the fact that I'm still on the potter's wheel, God is still able to use me. And guess what? The same God who's able to use me is able to use you. But don't Don't get caught up in the fact that the Lord is using you and start to think that it's happening because of who you are. Simon recognized that he was a sinful man, but that did not stop Jesus from using him. Jesus will meet you where you are, but he won't leave you like he found you. Remember what Isaiah said in chapter 6 and verse number 5? He said, Woe is me, for I am undone. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. In other words, in the year that King Uzziah died, when Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up, then Isaiah also saw himself and that he was not. Because every now and then you have a word coming forth and you say amen, but you also ought to have those moments when you hear a word and you say hey, ouch. You're talking about me stepping on your toes when I'm preparing the message. My, my shoes are scuffed before yours. Amen. Uh, now, 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 we, we can't let God working on us, God working through us, cause us to be lifted in pride. Yeah, that's right. Listen to what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 12, 6 and 7. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations that was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. I will not talk about certain things because I don't want any person to think of me as more than I really am. And folk will come to you and they will pump your head up. Yeah. Only to turn around and knife you in the back later. But they'll pump you up. And tell you how great you are. What a great job you're doing. But don't let it go to your head. Let them know that it's not I but Christ who's living in me. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, I wouldn't be here today. That's why, help me Holy Ghost, that's why when we have a particularly good Sunday in the music ministry, I have to sometimes warn the choir members, don't say we did that thing, we didn't do anything, it wasn't for the Holy Ghost working through us. When somebody comes to me and talks about how the message blessed them, I let them know it wasn't me. It was God who gave me the message to give to you. Because when a message comes and it sounds like I'm getting in your business, I wasn't in your business, but God knew what you needed to hear before you even set foot on 114 CL Bradford Street. So 
there is no way that I can take credit for any word that blesses you because it's the word of God. So God lets me look in the mirror and see me to remind me that it ain't about me. So they caught the fish. Both the ships were so full that they began to sink. Peter was astonished because in the presence of a holy God, he saw himself as a sinful man. So were those around him astonished at what God did. In Peter's life. And then Jesus said to Simon, fear not. From henceforth you shall catch men. Yeah. Later on, Jesus would tell his disciples, as recorded in Mark 16 and 15, mm -hmm. go into all the world. All. In other words, launch out into the deep water and preach the gospel to every preacher. In other words, when you go out into the deep, let down your net with the good news of Jesus Christ, the one who said, and I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. Go and let down your nets. But when you go into the deep, don't go on your own. But make sure that Jesus is in the ship. Make sure that you're operating by the word of God. On the day of Pentecost, after the Holy Ghost fell, they launched out into deeper water because there were men and women of every nation in Jerusalem on that day. And they lowered the net. Peter preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then they caught a great number of fish. 3,000 souls were added in one day. Because they launched out at the command of the Holy Ghost, with the power of the Holy Ghost, even though folk thought that they were drunk early in the morning, they still launched out and cast down their nets as Jesus told them to. But this wasn't a one-day fishing trip. Because as we keep reading in the book of Acts, they continue in the apostles' doctrine or teaching. In other words, they continued launching into the deep and casting their nets even after the day of Pentecost. And the Lord added fish, the Lord added soul daily. So you see that it's a continual cycle. And even today, God has commanded us to go ye therefore and teach our nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I'm in the ship with you. Lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. My brothers and sisters, we need to understand that we need to launch out. So when we look at it today, we can look at Lake Genesaret or the Sea of Galilee as the world. Yeah, that's right. We can look at the fish as the lost soul yeah. and the net as the word of God. Yeah. Because Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Mm. 
anymore. And sometimes we're casting the wrong net. All right. We wonder why we're not catching fish. Now it's time for me to go into the stories of my younger days when I would go fishing with <laughs> Reverend Edel Gordon. Yeah. Great fisher. Yeah. I would go out and wouldn't be catching anything. I'd get bored. But before we got to the creek, We stopped by the store and I would get some bubble gum. And when the fish weren't biting, I'd get bored. I'd take the bubble gum that I had chewed, roll it up into the shape of a worm, and put it on the hook. Now y'all know I didn't catch any fish. <laughs> With bulgum. Yeah. Because I wasn't using. Yeah. Right. Right. We're trying to get people to come into the kingdom based upon everything but the word of God. But if you want to have some sense to get caught, when you go out into the deeper water, make sure... In verse number five, Peter said, we toiled all night long. Let, 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 me, let me try to make that sound like something we can identify with. All right. We came to church every Sunday. We came to Bible study every Wednesday. All right. We came to choir rehearsal every Tuesday. We had food bank distribution on the third Saturday of every month. We had Kingdom Women of Hope every Saturday before the third Sunday. But we have not caught. All right. We have programs. We have processes. We're working very hard on our programs and our processes, but we aren't catching. Because as long as we're doing it our way all right. well, yeah. and not God. God's way, yes, then we can't expect, all right. even though we may have already launched out into the deep, <laughs> we have to do it God's way. But even though they had done it their way, when Jesus said, go again, they said, okay, Jesus, we'll try it your way. And when they did it God's way, the same thing that they tried to do before that didn't work, when they did it with Jesus directing them, so... Continuing the fishing story. All right. Pastor Gordon observed me fishing with those bubblegum worms. <laughs> After he finished laughing at me, <laughs> he observed that I continue to try to fish with those bubblegum worms. But one day we were walking along and somebody had dropped one of those rubber like lures. So he showed me how to put that on my hook. We were getting ready to go home. I said, let me cast one more time. I cast it one more time and I was just reeling it in like it was some bubble gum. But right before that lure got to the shore, a big old bag, hit that look. What am I trying to tell you? The same thing that I was doing with the bubble gum when I did it with the right bait. They didn't catch anything doing 
doing it their way, but when they did it Jesus' way, they had such a great catch that they could not even bring it in. Oh, yeah. So as churches and district associations, as state conventions and national conventions, we need to all work together yes, yes, yes. to launch yes, Lord. into the deep. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. The goal should not just be getting people to get into the building mm. of the church. All right. The goal should be to get people in the body yes. of Christ. I've heard it said before that some pastors have said, I would rather have a people full of church than a church full of people. Yes. We can't just go out and get people to come into the local assembly. We need to get people into the body of Christ so that when they come into the local assembly, then they too can go out. Because notice, at the beginning, Jesus was showing them or teaching them how to fish. But when he went back to glory, they had learned how to fish and they became. Oh, yeah. Uh, one more E.L. Gordon fishing story. I'm going to let y'all go. So we would go fishing. And at the spot where we were, the fish might not be biting. After a while, Rev would get one of the buckets of babies and go around to another part of the water. And we just sitting there having a good time eating snacks, me chewing bubblegum, <laughs> drinking some coke. We're still putting our lines out in the water. Nothing's happening. But then we look across the water, and Rev is over there, reeling them in. <laughs> and we're sitting there eating, drinking, and being merry. And Rev is over there, pulling me, reeling him in. When we look at launching out into the deeper water, all right, we can't sit here on the bank in the sanctuary, and God knows we could back this boat and love a good thing. But we can't be sitting here right. having a good time in the sanctuary. Right. We can't be sitting here eating good food in the fellowship hall right. while there are fish out there that are waiting. So we need to get off the shore. We need to go out into the deeper water and realize that it, I'm not saying it's a bad thing for us to fellowship, but we need to realize, see, it's just like we sit here on Sunday and we're comfortable with what we're doing on Sunday, but just like Pastor Gordon realized that he needed to go where the fish were, we too need to get up. He was leading us by example. Even then, I didn't think of a sermon illustration when that was happening, but it sure makes sense to me now. We not sit here and wait for the fish to jump in the boat. If we see the fish aren't biting, then we need to move and go where the fish were. So I could tell what we were going to be doing when I would go with Reverend Gordon. If he bought crickets, then I knew we were going brim fishing. If we stopped and got shot, we're going after the white perch. So not only when you launch out, launch out in the deep, you have to launch with the right bait, but you have to know what kind of fish.
Because not all fish are going to respond to the same bait. As you go fishing for brim, but you have the shiners for the white perch, then the brim aren't going to hit the shiners. And conversely, I don't remember catching any white perch on a cricket, but when we had When you go into the deep water, oh, yeah. we need to know what we're doing. What appeals to somebody on one side of town may not appeal to somebody on the other side of town. What appeals to the older people may not appeal to the younger people. We need to have enough sense to know, enough spiritual sense to know, that when we're launching out into the deeper water, Number one, we're making sure that we're doing it at Jesus' command, which he had already commanded us with the great mission. Make sure you're going with the right bait. And even though you might have been toiling all these months, all these years, when Jesus shows up on the scene, and you go out in his power. When he tells you to launch out into the deep, he's already prepared the fish. So, with that being said, how many of us are ready to launch out into deep water? extend the invitation to discipleship. An interesting analogy that moderate, moderator Bacon shared on Thursday night. In the natural, when you take the fish out of the water, you're taking them from life to death. Because once the fish are out of the water, they will not survive. But when you become a fisher of men, you're taking them from death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until I. How do I know that I have passed from death unto life? Oh, yeah. Because I love the brethren. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, Jesus said, that you love one another. When we launch out into deeper water, are we going out in love? Are we going out so we can have trophy fish on our wall? So that we can tell people how many fish we caught. A disciple is a learner. And as a disciple learns, that disciple that was a fish in the water learns how to go back and bring other fish. Out of the water. Oh, yeah. Remember, Jesus said to his disciples, I will make you fishers of men. But he first had to catch them. Right. He went into the deep water where they were to catch them. But once Jesus caught them and they recognized how Jesus caught them, then they were able to apply those techniques to catch others. Well, well, Pastor, I, I haven't gone through sharing Jesus without fear. I haven't memorized the Romans road How can I go out 
and go fishing. Have you been apprehended of Jesus Christ? Has he caught you with the net of his word? If you and I are truly born again, All right. then without a doctor of divinity, we too should be able to go out and share with somebody else what happened to us. Don't try to clean them before you catch them. Because there are none of us in here today who were clean fish when we first got caught. And as a matter of fact, let me just be honest, he's still cleaning us. As I remember after, after Rand would catch the fish and bring them to the house and mom would be cleaning the fish, every now and then there was still another scale that hadn't been... So the question right now is, do you know that you have been brought out of the deep, that the net of the gospel has captured you, that you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead? Do you know? Do you remember? When you got saved, do you remember where you were? When the Lord spoke to you? You might have been like me, sitting in the church house. I was sitting right there on that second pew in the middle aisle on a third Sunday night. You might not have been saved in the church. You might have been out there. And while you were out there, something happened. Somebody spoke to you. The Holy Ghost got on you on the inside. And you experienced something new. Now the short version is, you can come by letter. You can come by Christian experience. Or you can come as a candidate for baptism. What does that mean? Sometimes during the process of fishing, you end up on one boat, but circumstances cause you to need to be on another boat. Sometimes you will get a letter from the other church recommending you. Other times you just come based upon your Christian experience. But for those who are still out in the water, You're captured out of the water into the net. You acknowledge that you're a sinner just like Simon did. You believe the gospel of Jesus Christ in your heart. And you confess it with your mouth. So then after you come out of the water, you go into the water. And after you go down into the water, you come out of the water mm -hmm. yeah. to walk in the newness of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, it, does that sound terribly complicated to you? Sometimes we try to make it all mysterious. And we have people with the wrong conception of what it means to be saved. How many of you got baptized and got saved and then thought all of your problems were going to be over and everything was going to be all right. <laughs> then the devil hit you upside your head. And you started wondering if you were even saved. People need to know when they get saved, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. 
invitation to discipleship. Not simply an invitation to membership because again, we're not trying to get bodies into the local church. We're trying to get souls into the kingdom. Amen. Launch out into deeper water. Is there one today as we stand all over the sanctuary based upon this invitation if you feel that you need to come forward Like Simon, you see yourself, not as compared to other people in the world, but you see yourself as compared to a holy God. Do you need to come today? Are you watching online and you're saying, well, I can't get into the building. The Lord's net is so big that it extends beyond the walls of this building or any other building, right where you are, just as the Spirit of God is pricking your heart as you're watching this video, you can receive them right now. Just let Jesus know, I admit that I'm a sinner. Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross, that you rose on the third day, you ascended to glory and you're coming back. I confess it from my mouth, but I believe it in my heart. Not only that you are Savior, but that you are Lord. If you sincerely mean that, you don't have to use my words. Right where you are, he will take you out of the deep, bring you on shore, start cleaning up on you, and then send you when you're ready, when you have the right thing, you'll send you. Don't wait to be perfect because none of us have gotten there. Don't let anybody fool you with a fake religion. But it's only the power of the Holy Spirit speaking to your spirit to let you know that you are a child of God. He bears witness with you to let you know. Launching out into the deep. sending people who loved us enough to go out oh, yes. to launch into deeper water where we were. Yes, Thank you for the mothers, the fathers, the grandmothers, the grandfathers yes. that launched out into the deep even as we were under their care. They continued to give us the word. Thank you for the pastors and the teachers who launched out into the deep, casting the right net, using the right things. 
so that we might be able to come to you. And Father, even now, if there's anyone under the sound of my voice who has not yet Receive the spirit of adoption whereby they cry, Abba, Father. We ask you to continue to minister to them, Father, that your word will go forth. It will not return unto you void, but it will accomplish the thing that you clean and prosper in the thing whereto you sin. Lord God, so often we ask you to go, but that's not what you designed. You told us to go. And that you would be with us as we go. So Father, any doubts, any fears that we might have that will prevent us from launching into deeper water. You have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So right now, Father, we yield ourselves to you. Just as Simon yielded his ship for you to come on board. We yield ourselves to you that you might use us. to be fishers of men. Anything that will hinder us from doing this, again, we bind it in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over every situation, from the crowns of our heads to the soles of our feet, that we will not go out trying to get glory for ourselves. We will not go out trying to get glory for good hope, but we will let our light shine before men that they will see our good works and glorify you. So whatever it may be, might it be physical, might it be mental, might it be emotional, might it be financial, whatever it is, God, remove it so that we might be able to go and to do that which you have assigned us to do. Thank you, Father God, for the test that we've already received, but we know that the harvest is still plenty. So as we are going on our jobs, as we are going in the store, as we are going wherever we may go, let us live a life that is reflective of you so that people may be drawn. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do. We thank you for what you're doing right now. We thank you for what you've already done. And let us not be hearers of your word only, but doers. Because our faith without works is dead. And now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. So that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And as we leave this place, may we never leave his care. We ask it all in Jesus' name. And the people of God say, Amen. God bless you. Launch out into deeper water.